So if you asked me, if you said, Mark, what is the single greatest thing to making magic the awesome game it is? I would say the color pie. That particular episode of Mark Rosewater's Drive to Work podcast changed the course of my life. Or said another way, it granted me a new obsession. The color pie is a stroke of genius. It dictates everything within Magic the Gathering, from themes and flavor to mechanics and design. And yet, Richard Garfield hadn't intended for there to be something so profound at the heart of his game. He simply needed a restriction for deck building, and perhaps a touch of thematic resonance to tie things together. To get there, he took inspiration from other sources, and played around with ideas until something just clicked. What makes it most intriguing to me is that if it had happened any other way, we might not be sitting here talking about it almost 30 years later. In this video, I want to take a closer look at the brilliance of the color pie, how it was formed, its effects on the game, and finally why it could not have taken any other shape than the one it does now. I guarantee that after this video, you won't ever look at the color pie the same again. To better understand this discussion, we must start at the beginning. Five colors, uh, it's, it's rooted in games that I was making uh, in the early 80s. Uh, uh, some friends and I were making uh, a, a bunch of card games based on, uh, uh, based on each other. And uh, there was a book that was uh, going around then uh, called The Master of the Five Magics, I think it was. Now, I never read it, but uh, one of my friends did, and so that probably is where the number five came from originally. I probably would have changed it, except it works really well for uh, a, a lot of things. When we think back to Richard Garfield's original design for magic, we tend to see it with the power of hindsight and nostalgia. We assume that he was some sort of game design god who forged the perfect game out of nothing more than the infinite wisdom of his mind. The truth, like most creative endeavors, is in fact a little more simple. Like all great things, it's a combination of borrowing and iterating until something just worked for him. Richard Garfield has said in the past that his idea for splitting magic into five colors comes from a little book called Masters of the Five Magics, a book he admits to not even reading. He was just struck by the idea of five schools of magic, and knew deep down that this would be the basis for his game. I looked into this book, and I wouldn't say that he took the schools and simply overlaid them onto his initial idea for the color pie, as they hold very different themes. Rather, he borrowed the idea of five, a simple take, but sometimes things just sound right the moment you hear them, and I venture to guess this was the case. Now, here is where things get interesting. This decision to split the color pie into five instead of, say, four or six actually holds a lasting impact on the game, in that with this exact number, each color has two enemies and two allies, a factor we will come back to later on in this video as it's pivotal to its design. Now, I don't want you to think that borrowing or taking inspiration from other creative works is a bad thing. In fact, it's quite the opposite, really. Mark Twain himself said this about borrowing ideas. There is no such thing as a new idea. We simply take a lot of old ideas and put them into a sort of mental kaleidoscope. If we go back to the book that inspired the decision for the five colors, Masters of the Five Magics, we see this little book has inspired more than just Magic the Gathering. In fact, you can find its influence in the Megadeth song of the same name. As well, the author Patrick Rothfuss has said that this book inspired his own writings of the Kingkiller Chronicles. When Magic the Gathering was nothing more than some scribble and cutout pictures on cardboard, I doubt he envisioned how much of a pivotal piece of Magic the Gathering the color pie would become, and how much each color would inevitably be so well defined. Could he have ever guessed that there would be some council of colors analyzing everything about what each color believed in? No. The honest truth is that he needed something to divide up the game into neat factions and themes. 
But somehow he captured lightning in the bottle, and the color pie grew beyond the vision of its original master. Now you have channels such as mine putting out essays on its many facets and intricacies. Even the colors he decided on aren't some fantastic revelation. Of course, the color for order and peace would be white, resonant of holy magic, a, a paladin or a cleric. Then it's only natural its enemy would be black, darkness and self-reliance. Red, the color of rashness and impulses. You see, these factors do not take anything away from what he did. No, quite the opposite. I find it almost beautiful to see how something grew so far beyond its original intention. It's the fascinating realization that a small idea in one man's head could grow and take shape into something much bigger, and allow other creative people to take up that idea and breathe life into it. This small book from the 80s inspired the color pie, and in turn, the color pie has inspired the creation of new planes, factions, and many other creative endeavors outside of Magic the Gathering. It's as if Richard Garfield threw a stone into a lake which caused ripples that can still be felt far from their origins. Um, and the neat thing, this is the awesome thing about the color pie is that it not only defines the flavor, it defines the mechanics. That the core of the game, when you dig down deep and you look at the game, the game has at its core uh, a psychological underpinning. And not a lot of games do that. The color pie dictates two major aspects of the game of Magic the Gathering, and those are mechanics and flavor. Every world, character, or faction is built with the color pie in mind. Mechanics are then used to complement these aspects, creating a marriage of flavor and mechanical design. For instance, why does white change the rules of the game with enchantments that tax or restrict the board? Why does red burn or rush its opponent down? Why is green so focused on creatures? All of this may seem like the result of an arbitrary decision made by the designers, but that couldn't be farther from the truth. These effects mirror the philosophies and themes of these colors. What do I mean? Well, you see, white is the color of order and of law, and thus it restricts what can be done to maintain some semblance of order and control over the state of the game. Blue is the color of learning and perfection, and so it digs deep into its library until it finds the perfect outcome for any situation. Black is the color who will take any path to get what it wants, restrictions be damned. And because of this, it's willing to turn to dark magics and effects that require it to sacrifice others to get the result it wants. Red is the color of impulse and emotion, and so it does not have a grander plan outside of playing its cards as fast as it can, reflecting that need to act. Green is the color who is built around the idea of following nature's examples, and so it leans into things like creatures, and that of spells that help the growth and cultivation of the land. Outside of the mechanics, the color pie is, as I've said many times before, the beating heart of the multiverse. It is not just how every plane, character, or faction is framed, but rather the reason it is the way it is. If we come across a faction who is blue and black, we know without reading one bit of flavor text or lore that they are a faction who is ambitious and deals in secrets and subterfuge. If we meet a character who is white-red, we know that they are one to fight for their convictions. You see, the color pie resonates on a deeper level than that of a simple way to divide up the game into five neat parts. It is, in fact, the most important part of Magic the Gathering. You could not have magic without the color pie, and yet you could have the color pie without magic. The color pie, the neat thing about it is, Richard decided that at the core of the game, he was going to base everything on the definition of these colors. And the colors, the core of the colors is philosophy. Each color wants something and functions such a way. And, and this is uh, the awesomeness of this, is Richard set it up such a way that each one of the colors connected to two colors and was enemy of two colors, you know? And one of the neat things, by the way, is the five conflicts of magic, which means opposite color conflicts, are five of, like, the classic concepts of humanity, of literature, of, you know... And all of it comes back to the relationship of five, 
established from the very beginning. The simplest answer is that the color pie fits very neatly as five. What I mean is that with this arrangement there is a balance, where every single color has two enemies and two allies. Yes, you could add in a bunch of new colors and there would still be a system of enemies and allies, but it wouldn't be such a tight package, in that each color would not have the same relationship with one another. There would be space between them. In its current state there is a perfect balance. One where every single color is either an ally or an enemy of one another. This is when the color pie is best. And by adding even one single color, you would break this tight coupling. But if we dig another layer deeper, you will see that the colors are the way they are because of the relationship they have with one another. White isn't what it is solely because of its core ideology. It is also in opposition to its enemies. And thus, its enemies are the way they are because they oppose its ideologies. Any small shift in their position would in fact break the resolve each color has over what it believes. How about an example? Let's talk about white again. At the core of white is one major ideal, and that is order. If we know this, then we can be confident that its enemies oppose this ideal in some way. For one, red is the color of freedom and of chaos. It fundamentally opposes order because it restricts impulses. On the other hand, black resists order because it restricts forward momentum. Black does not want to place any walls in front of itself on its path to getting what it wants. This isn't where it ends though, as any ideal a color holds has an effect on its allies as well. For one, blue's version of order would be structure, for without some form of structure then perfection could not be reached. On the other side, green has its own version of order, and that is harmony. Green believes that the world will balance itself out by following its purpose. So you see, even with this small example, the importance of this relationship becomes apparent. If anything were to shift, or a color placed in the way of one another, it would have rippling effects all throughout the color pie. It all comes back to Richard's initial intuition could just feel that 5 was right, and that was because of the relationship that it provided. I doubt he knew how complex it would become, but as it is with most of his original designs, he knew without even realizing what the color pie should be. It's as if it lived in him, this concept beyond a game, beyond just mechanics. From the mind of a young man in the 90s to the worldwide phenomenon it is now, Magic the Gathering has captured the imagination of people for generations, and at the heart of this game we love is the color pie. An act of inspiration and iteration, the color pie is a core system like no other. One that has sparked conversation and imagination in others, and will continue to do so long into the future, perhaps even after magic has faded. To me, the color pie is more than the sum of its parts and more than a simple mechanic in a game. It is a living and breathing thing, open and ready to be discussed. Even if you don't interact with the color pie in ways outside of how it affects your game, you must recognize how it holds it all together. So perhaps when you crack your next pack and look at your cards, take a second to appreciate how the color pie affects every aspect of it. Well, I'm so happy to have finally finished this video. I've been working on it for a couple weeks now, and I hope it inspired you. If you're new to the color pie, then check out this video here where I go over each and every color in great detail. I also want to say thank you so much to my patrons for their support. It truly means a lot. With that, friends, I will catch you in the multiverse. Bye.